with our next session, and uh, we want to bring to this pulpit. Have you enjoyed the teaching? Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we want to bring Brother Thompson up, and he will be teaching on the Holy Ghost Advantage. And so we just want to continue with uh, what we're being given in Jesus' name. Just believe in God. Amen. Brother Thompson. Thank you, Brother Scott. Thank you very much. And a couple of years ago when I was at GO Conference, um, I have a sister-in-law who lives in Salisbury, Maryland, and she's a um, backslidden, uh, my wife's backslidden sister, and she married a very, very fine man, and he's a uh, white-collar worker, uh, very successful. And when I was here, we thought, I wonder if there's any way we could get him to go to church. So um, Brother Reaver and I had a conversation. He said, well, let me line you up with a church somewhere that direction and see if um, you to preach. Maybe if you preach, you can get your relatives to come. And um, he lined me up with Brother Scott over on the other side because they were uh, clo closer towards where they lived. And there couldn't have been a better church that... Uh, Brother Reaver could have lined me up with for the situation. Um, they have a moving, shaking, going church, and it was absolutely everything that um, my brother-in-law needed for a first experience with Pentecost. Um, I, I mean, the people were dancing and spinning, and I mean, it was just everything. A good, and nobody intimidated about guests being there. And um, he didn't even know what to do with himself. Um, we were watching, and he's looking around, and he put his hands up a little bit, you know. And, but he could not stop talking about what he felt and what he saw in their church. So thank you for that. Uh, amen. So the subject is the Holy Ghost advantage, and just a little bit of background is that, uh, or setup to what we're going to be talking about is really what I'm going to talk about has already been set up over and over and over. Um, and building off of what Brother Sistrom just talked about, we're going to be um, helping you to understand and grasp and believe that you can, you can win a soul. You absolutely can win a soul. Um, I think that's the biggest block that we have is, is right up here in our minds that, you know, that I just can't do that. And... Um, I, I want you to understand not ju it's not going to be just you and your charisma that helps you. It's going to be the power of God working through you and in you as you allow God to use you. And, and he'll take any available vessel. Uh, I think back when I was in Bible school, there was a, a guy who was actually a, a, out of Chicago who came to Bible school. And he probably was an inner city kind of guy, and he didn't fit in with the rest of the students at ABI. He wasn't a PK, and he didn't literally walk the walk of all the rest of them. He was just a little bit different. But um, while he was at Bible school, he was witnessing to people. And he went into a, I don't know what caused him to go into the hardware store, what he was going in there for, but he started witnessing to the guy behind the counter, which happened to be the proprietor, which actually, actually was the son of the proprietor who was running the business. He began to talk to him and uh, got a Bible study with him, and uh, that turned out to be Brother Olson, who ended up being a missionary to uh, Norway and then to Russia, and now is a pastor in a church in South Dakota. Uh, and this was the, probably the person that, if we are in the student body, we're going to say, who's the most likely person to win a soul? I don't think he would have reached, been, you know, it would have been all those guys who were uh, eager to get up there and preach their uh, devotions and uh, really seemed like they had the smooth approach. But the guy who really made the impact was just a very, very, very ordinary guy, probably not voted to be the most likely. And... Uh, uh, what we don't understand is the power of one. You have no idea who is God will bring you in your path and who you reach, and the, there's no way to measure the eternal impact. What about that person who uh, God had to talk to to go uh, 
talked to the most violent terrorist in his time, and his name was Saul of Tarsus. <laughs> and you think about it, how could you measure? Was he scared? Yeah, he was arguing with God. You know, no, no, God, he, I mean, he's cutting heads off. He's, you know, I mean, no, uh-uh-uh. And the Lord says, no, I want you to go talk to him. I prepared him. You can't measure how, what God can do through you. It's just a powerful thing. And, and, and I'm here to tell you today and to share with you just the fact that you have the Holy Ghost is absolutely all that it takes and enough to make you an effective soul winner for Jesus Christ because he gives you his strength and his power through his spirit within you. Amen. I started yesterday talking upon on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's the first I will. I mentioned yesterday, the second I will is, he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God made this decision that he was going to be dependent and he chose to use humans to bring the message. It's through the foolishness of preaching. And then we get to that word preaching. Through the foolishness of preaching. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not a preacher. But the word preaching just simply means a proclaimer. And it means a proclaimer of that which has happened, something that's already taken place. And everybody here's got a story. And everybody here's got a testimony. And that's all it takes if you've been converted. And his spirit dwells within you. You've got a story. And the other thing it takes is, is that once we begin to believe that God can use us, is now then being alert to the doors that God will open to someone who is willing to be a vessel. He will open up doors so surprising, so astonishing to you, that you will be absolutely amazed simply because you begin to pray and say, okay, God, I believe I can do this. I can win a soul. Matter of fact, before we're done, I'm, I hope to make commitments that by this time next year, Lord willing, with his help, that there will be someone in the kingdom because of you that you can say, because I want you to be convinced when you leave that God can take me because we can't just have the church planner and just the pastor or just that A1 personality person. Everybody here with the Holy Ghost, God can use. You go back to Azusa Street and uh, I had the opportunity when I was teaching at ABI um, not S.G. Norse, but Robert Norse, who had been a missionary in South America for 40 years or something like that. Uh, and he was at the end of his life, and he came to me and said, hey, I happen to have a copy of the Azusa Street Papers. Would you like to see him?" I'm like, what? I tried to figure out how I could steal him. <laughs> and so I got to read the Azusa Street Papers. Unbelievable the things that God was doing through 13, 14, 15-year-old people. Some of the greatest soul winners. God was using absolutely everybody who was a willing vessel. And he wants to use you. That's his choice. He said, I'll build a church, but I'm going to give you the keys. And if you can grasp today and really understand, I have the keys. I have his spirit. He will empower me. This is a possibility. You'll be amazed at the opportunities that arise. Already has been read this morning by Brother Sistrunk, Jesus came and he spoke to them saying, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Go. On the basis, all authority in heaven and earth, and he's speaking it to you and he's saying, You've got, you've got, you've got my badge. I'm going to put the star on your chest. You're going to be my ambassador. You can go, and I'm, I'm backing you. I am backing you. And he ends that as he says, All authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world, to the end of the age. That's us. He's saying, no matter how long this goes on until I return, I promise to be with the people who go. And that's the reason why signs follow them that believe. If you'll step and say, I'm a vessel, 
you'll see more signs, wonders, and miracles teaching home Bible studies than you've ever seen in your entire life. It's not because you're, you're somebody so great. You've just been an available vessel. And that's what God does is it's in the home. It's where you're teaching, when you're reaching, that you'll see things happen. Matter of fact, the best way to reach an agnostic is simply say to him, I understand you don't trust or believe in a God, but would you consider just pray? And just ask, God, if you're God, if there really is God, can you think of any reason, something you need? God's going God's to come through. And I think of a story that I, I'm talking about hungry hearts. God's going to find a way for them. Brother Wagner from the Yukon told the story about how that in the church that was up in the Yukon, he said a... a uh, a rabbi, uh, 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 excuse me, a Native American, or um, what do they call them there, Aborigines, uh, came into the surf, and he was a, a towering, massive Indian. And he said he was a, a little bit intimidating. And he said he came in, and he said, but nevertheless, he said, the people weren't intimidated, and they worshiped. And the Spirit of God began to move, and people were worshiping and speaking out loud in tongues, and during the middle of the service, before the preaching, just before the preaching began, the man stood up and said, can I say something? And he was like, well, yes. And he said, well, what can I come up? <laughs> and we all get apprehensive when a guest says, I want to come up front. Uh, so he said, yeah, sure, you can come right up here. You know, he just got, guided him to the front. And, and the man turned around and he spoke and he said, when I was a young Indian, when I was a young lad, and I was going through all my rites of passage. And I was standing out on the mountains and the sides, and I was looking at all the creation that was around me. I was overwhelmed with what God created. With this. And I said, whoever you are and whatever God there is that created this, that's what I want to know. And he said, and I can't explain it, but I began to speak in a language I didn't understand. And all these years, I've never known what it was till I walked into this little church, and you guys were speaking in the same language that I spoke in when I was a lad out there on the side of the mountain. I'm here to tell you, God's a marvelous God. He's going to do anything and everything to draw people to him. So you're not in this alone. You've got to understand, as we're sitting here right now, he's out there pulling on somebody's heart that's in your world, in your sphere of influence. But you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness, who pulled on your heart and drew you in, into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are a people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but have now obtained mercy. He has chosen you that you may proclaim the praises of him that called you out of darkness. Therefore, if anybody's in Christ, he's a new creation. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you became a new creation. Old things were passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given unto us, 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 the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the ministry or the word of reconciliation. It isn't, again, getting on a street corner. But you're going to discover when you open up and you allow God to use you that all of a sudden people are just going to start talking about things and they'll, they'll be saying, I, I, I don't know why. I just sat down. I don't know why I'm telling you all this stuff. It's because the Lord's already been doing work pulling. We'll get to that in just a moment. And you begin to discover, and you already can stop and think. You know, you sit down and, and people will uh, wait, you know, just start telling their life. Total strangers. There's, there's, there's a reason behind all that. Because we all have a story. We've all been reconciled. And so he goes on, he says, he's coming into us a word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. And that is what I want you to leave this place thinking. 
an ambassador's not from the country. They're from another place. They don't necessarily dress like where they're at. They dress like back home. Their language is like back home. And what they are and who they are really becomes obvious to the people that they're not, they're not like the rest that's around there because they represent a different place. Nothing to be ashamed of. And he has called us to be ambassadors. And I want you to walk out today and feel like you're an ambassador of God. And he said, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. And Jesus did give us this promise. He said, I am with you and I shall be in you. Let me take you to John chapter 12 and I'll, I'll start working into where I'm going, having built a little bit of a foundation. John 12, verses 31 through 33. Jesus, this is um, um, at the end of his ministry, and um, he's, he's speaking, and, and he says, Now, or immediately, is the judgment of this world. It's, it's at the, the point of crucifixion. All is culminating at this moment. And he says, now is the judgment of this world, or this cosmos. Now shall the prince, or the ruler of this world, again, the word world is cosmos, means an orderly arrangement of the universe. The prince of this world is, of course, Satan. He said, now he's going to be cast out. So, Immediately, now is the judgment of this world, and now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And this he said, signifying what death he should die, crucifixion. I'm about to go to the cross. And when all this happens, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Satan's dominance was dissolved at the death of Christ on the cross of Calvary. His resurrection from the dead and his ascension and filling us with his Holy Spirit. But he said, if that happens, I will draw all men. Satan's dominance would be dissolved. He'd be cast out. He'd be expelled. He'd be ejected. He'd be driven out, stripped of his authority. Jesus said, no man can enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man. Then he will spoil his house. And what he's saying is, I came here in flesh and I have done the work. I have gone into his, his territory. I'm spoiling it all. And when I finish this work, I will draw all men unto me. I bring this scripture to you so you can get it into your mind and get it into your head that the clerk that you go and you buy your groceries at week in and week out, he's already promised you because of what he's done that he's drawn that girl or that woman's heart. He said, I will draw all men. Not everybody answers that question. But when he said all men, it's absolutely inclusive of all people. There's no one excluded from it. I'm here to tell you, you can take a look at somebody that you would think there's no possible way they'll ever come to God. But I will promise you, even though that's in your thinking, he's drawn on that heart. He's drawn on that heart. Because he said, I'm going to pay the price. And because I paid the price, I can strip him of all authority and power. And I will draw all men unto me. So through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the head of the serpent that bitterly wounded the heel of humankind was permanently crushed. And every time we make ourselves available to God and another soul is one and another life is affected, it's crushing the powers of darkness and it's bringing a soul from darkness into the kingdom of light. And after the judgment of Satan and he being cast out, Jesus declared, I will draw all men unto me. And when you think about drawing, what comes to my mind is a magnet. And if uh, Brother Martin doesn't mind coming up, um, I'd like to have him help me. 
Uh, just, just you for right now. We'll call your wife a little bit later. She can help too. But um, I've got a couple magnets here. All right. If you want to put one in each hand and come out here and face everybody. Um, and we know the power of a magnet. So I want you to take those two and... <laughs> Pull them apart. Okay, hold it. Hold it like this. Smart. Smart. Hold them like this. Hey, there was our 100 pound magnets. Oh, wow. <laughs> Come on, don't Come on now. Don't expose me. <laughs> <laughs> so just twist them. There we go. All right. Okay. I, I, I know I can. He's okay. <laughs> Just bring them to cl close together, but don't, don't let them touch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not happening. It's not happening, yes. That's, that's, the, these are 100 pounds. They can pick up 100 pounds. Now turn this one upside down. Okay. And keep that one that way, so you can take this one. Okay. Now... Put them together just like they clicked together before. What's happening is they're repelling. <laughs> okay, so what happens is when you have two positives, they repel. Two negatives, they repel. What is it going to take? A positive and a negative. Okay? Well, let's just think about this. As long as someone in their mind thinks they don't need God and their God, ain't nothing clicking. Doesn't matter how much power he's drawn, they've put up their resistance. But you can mark it down that God's going to bring something into their life at some point in time. So I had this, um, I worked bivocational for 25 years of my ministry, and I was a manager of a business, and I had a department head who was really, um, I'll put it this way, my spirit and her spirit clashed. Every time I'd come to work, I'd feel that. Now, you understand what I'm talking about? You just walk into places, and all of a sudden, there's a clash. We're going to get to that. And um, her attitude about me is, what's wrong with you? You're happy all the time, you know? <laughs> and um, uh, just very, just very difficult to get, get along with. And it's because our spirits were constantly clashing. But there was a situation that happened in her life where, her, in her mind, her daughter was getting involved in a cult. And it was at the company Christmas party after she'd had several drinks, and I didn't have anything to do with that, even though I managed the business. It's all from higher up. Please understand that. <laughs> uh, I wasn't drinking. Uh, and <clears throat> she had a few drinks, and that's what it took for her to go to the place where she knew there was something good drawing. Yeah. And she said, D can I talk to you? And I said, sure. She said, I need to talk to you about my daughter. She said, I'm extremely concerned. Oh, she's getting involved in a cult. Well, what had happened is, is that um, one day I was walking through the break room and the Lord told me, why don't you go ask that girl for a Bible study? And I went, well, God, I'm on, I'm on, I can't do that on time. So he says, well, then take a break. <laughs> Okay, God. <laughs> so um, I go into the break room, and there's all kinds of people in the break room. It's like, can't you just set it up so that it's just me and her or what? You know what I mean? Come on. And he says, I want you to ask her for a Bible study. I said, okay. I said, um, I sat down, and I said, interested in the Bible study? That's really hard for an introvert. I said, interested in Bible study? I just thought maybe I'd offer you a Bible study. And she goes, No. I'm like, <laughs> I 
But the girl across the table said, did you say something about Bible study? I like to have that Bible study. So I started, my wife and I started teaching that girl a Bible study, and she started telling her classmate in high school about it. And now the two of them, um, I'd gotten them all the way up to baptism, and they had to leave and go to college because they were so close. They both went to the same college about 100 miles away, and I hooked them up to the church that was there, and that pastor began to teach them a Bible study, and both of them got baptized and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So, here she's coming to me, she's saying, I need, I, I, need, it's, I need help, my daughter's in, in a cult, and I already know the back story. She's not in a cult, she's, she's okay. <laughs> but the thing was is that God had to bring that woman to, to a place I was gone for a number of years, um, and I came back to the community. When I came to church, guess who was sitting in that audience? That negative push, that negative push, that negative push. What, we're, what I'm telling you is you have the Holy Ghost advantage. And what we also want you to understand is <clears throat> that God says, you know, hold on. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> God is drawing. Yes. But what he's needing is the other part of yes. the, the, the other part, the human part. Yeah. You can mark it down. He's drawing. Yes. And our job is to somehow be sensitive or be there or alert. Something can happen and pick up. So that all of a sudden, even though there's been resistance and resistance and resistance, that all of a sudden you can feel something shift. Same thing happened to my wife. She was going through the grocery store. The Lord said, ask that lady for a Bible study. So my wife asked her, could I teach you a Bible study? She said, no. I mean, just blunt, very no. She said, two or three years later, shopping at the same store, the Lord told me, ask her for a Bible study. She said, I told God, I already did. You remember? She told me no. <laughs> He said, I said, ask her for a Bible study. I mean, okay, we all argue with God, but at least we have the Holy Ghost in enough sense to we, we only argue once or twice. <laughs> and she said to the lady, she said, uh, you remember I asked you for a Bible study? Have you ever thought about it? And she said, I want a Bible study. Her whole family came into the church. You see, it's a matter of us of being with God and what he's doing and his working in the world and allowing ourselves, anybody, anybody, anybody in this room can do what I'm talking about because we're filled with his spirit and we've got the advantage. I will hasten. Someone will have to help keep, keep track of time. Sometimes I get lost in these things. What I have here is a compass, okay? And if you can put the first power, uh, second, yeah, next PowerPoint up. We're all aware of the fact, and this is a poor example of it, and, uh, but the North Pole, and it's not exactly the North Pole, it's just a, it's a little bit off from the North Pole, is the uh, magnetic field for the, for the Earth. And in this compass that I have right here has a little tiny magnetic pin uh, uh, that floats on, a, on top of a little point so that it can spin. And how a compass works is that it's magnetic, but, the mag but a magnet is going to be drawn to a more powerful magnet. So this is just a really, a you know, it doesn't have much power, it's just a little tiny pin that's floating there. But there's a magnet all the way from the North Pole that is affecting this pin. I mean, we, we have a hard time wrapping our heads around that. But I'll tell you what, when I walk over to those, that magnet and I put my compass to it, guess what's going to happen to my compass? It's going to go to the magnet. But she shall receive power. After that, the 
Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. I don't know if you're feeling what I feel. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Do you know what you're feeling? You're feeling that magnetic pull right now. You're feeling the power, the power. We're feeling it in this place. So let's watch the pin. Yes. Oh, we got, oh, we got two of them. That's, a, that's the problem. That's there. It's moved. there. The pin is going everywhere he moves at. Spinning. So you walk into a restaurant after red hot Sunday night service. Guess what happens? Every head in the place and turns and looks at you. They don't have a clue why they're looking at you. But there's something inside them that has picked up a power that entered in the room that's greater than their power. And their magnet, without even thinking, is spinning to take a look at what is it. Because those, the weaker is always drawn to the greater. Hear me! The weaker is always drawn to the greater. And when that weaker is drawn to the greater, and that creates a, an intimidation, they're going to push back on it. There's nothing you can do about that. But you just let God do his work. And there'll come a time when they need to know where the greater is. And they're going to turn to you. That's what this is about. It's saying, God, just let me be that one that you can use when somebody's compass is looking for a true north. Next slide. There it is. There's the North Pole. And he said, I will draw. So mark this down. God's drawn everybody. Mark down the second thing. He has to use men with it. And I probably went a little bit faster and skipped over some things in my notes, but we have to understand that How shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a... Oh, but I'm not a preacher. What is a preacher? A proclaimer. I'm not saying we don't need a preacher. You understand what I'm saying? But I want you to understand, it's a proclaimer. And how shall they preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach or proclaim the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And we all can, if it's nothing else, start with our testimony, because we all have a testimony. And you may say, well, I don't have a testimony. I was raised in Pentecost. So was I. But you know just as good as anybody else that we all have the works of the flesh. And there's none of us even raised. I thank God for all the things he saved me from. But we can, I can't put myself on a pedestal like I'm better or I could, I could save myself and, and probably would make it more difficult for me to be saved because I was raised in it to some degree because then I, you think you know, all this kind of stuff and I've ever made a mistake, there's no hope. Where they already know they don't have hope. But I'm here to tell you, God is calling, God's looking, and he's looking to use you. So he draws us with his spirit. He draws us with that drawing attraction. Matter of fact, in the Greek, the word draw literally can, is used to describe a magnetic attraction. Now, um, I, I don't want to put Martin on the spot here, but um, I noticed that he was sitting next to this fine young lady, and um, I could really feel some attraction drawings. <laughs> hey, man, that's right. And there's nothing to be ashamed about, is there? No, God did a great thing. I'm talking about this is powerful stuff. Paul in Ephesians 3, 7 says, The gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. The word effectual working is two words in English, but the original Greek is just one word, energia. From which we get our word energy. And that is what the Eastern religions are talking about right now. Oh, energy, energy. It needs spiritual energy. But they don't have the real spiritual energy. My daughter worked for a um, um, 
wellness center. And in the wellness center was a, a lady from Nepal who was doing Reiki and all of the Eastern religions, and she had all kinds of clients coming in. Well, my daughter got married. She invited everybody from her work to the wedding. And when sh this lady came to the wedding, um, we're having a, an apostolic wedding. We're, we're, we expect the presence of God to be in a wedding. It doesn't matter what we do. And my uh, daughter who's getting married, her two siblings, and uh, part of the family got together to sing, and the presence of God came in. They're standing at the altar with their hands raised and tears running down, their faces looking at each other while their, their own siblings, are, are, my, my daughter's sibling is singing in the presence of God's in that place. You could feel it from the front and the back. I mean, there was all kinds of people in that place. But I'm telling you, it was tingling all over that place. Afterwards, that woman, all she could say is, I couldn't believe the energy that I felt in that place. I couldn't believe the energy I felt in that place. I can't believe all. I've never experienced such energy before. And you're like, you're right, you haven't. You've been looking for the wrong source. What happened is she came into a meeting of something that was more powerful than what she had and something was turning her saying what is this what is this so we understand that this is magnetic and I'm not trying to be coy or anything but I, I just want to help you understand through science maybe We're talking about a heartbeat takes a positive and a negative. Electricity is going in your body. It's these positives and negatives have. Every single cell in your body has electromagnetic activity and electricity going on inside of it. Matter of fact, when your electricity stops, you're dead. And all intercellular communication happens through these, through it. And all intracellular happens through electric, electric communications and electricity. That is how God designed our body. Every organ has its own electromagnetic field. And all of these electromagnetic fields and everything all work and collaborate together just like the body of Christ should. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we have, each of us has an electromagnetic field that exudes basically from the area of our chest. So every heartbeat is the completion of electrical circuit and it generates electromagnetic waves throughout the blood vessels of the body, stimulating tissue at the cellular level. Every cell of your body has its own electromagnetic field, as I've already stated. Maintaining balance in those cell, uh, cellular electromagnetic fields is crucial to your physical health. God put the electromagnetic field as part of every tissue. Every organ has its own field, as I said, and each works together for the greater of the whole. If you would take me to the next slide. So each of us has an electromagnetic field, and as I said, basically emanates from the area of the heart. The earth has got its electromagnetic field. Everything, you know, I'm just trying to get you to understand, this is everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the food that we eat, all substance, all matter is electromolecular compositions. The EKG, the electrocardiogram measures the electromagnetic activity of the heart to see how healthy it is and what state it's in. The EEG, the electroencephalograph, measures the electromagnetic activity of the brain. Magnetic resonating images, uh, MRI. All this is all measuring magnetic stuff. And what happens is where you got damage in your body, it cannot produce as strong of a signal. There's so many spiritual applications to this. The reason why you've got to tap into the spirit is because you're, you know what happens? When, uh, it's kind of how I felt last night. Man, I don't have any energy. You don't. You're saying the truth. You don't even know it. That means because you've exhausted 
and you haven't replenished with sleep and the things that are necessary and food and all that kind of stuff, your body's energy is not at its peak. Mm -hmm. Depending upon the health in this room, your electromagnetic field, some people's electromagnetic field will be stronger than others depending upon the health of them. So a healthier, undamaged cell, health, hence a healthy body, has a stronger electromagnetic field. Contrawise, a weaker damaged cell or body has a weaker ele electromagnetic energy and is more prone for disease. When we're exhausted, we say, I don't have any energy. I've already said that. That's because we're suffering weaker electromagnetic energy. So if I could have um, us together together here for just a little example. I, I'm, I'm just trying to bring some things home for you. Um, and let's, let's get right out here where most people can be able to see. What I have here is some kids' tennis shoes. You know, the kind that light up. They're magic. <laughs> uh, really, they're not. Do you know that embedded in the heel of the shoe is a little battery that's only going to last, and they make the battery to last only long enough for what they figure the kid will be long enough before the shoe wears out, and you're going to discover most kids' lights don't work as long as they wear the shoe because the battery runs out. Okay. That doesn't mean your kid loses its, its, its energy. It means the battery's dead. Okay? So this shoe still has some battery, even though I, I've had this shoe for several years because it doesn't get used that much. But the secret is, is in, inside of the soul, inside of the soul, <laughs> inside of the soul, there is this wiring that goes through. So when the child steps down with that heel, those wires will begin to wobble. And what happens is what? It starts connecting to a battery. It, it's, it's completing a circuit. So when it completes the circuit and the wobbling happens, the lights go. The harder I hit it, you know, sometimes you can get it to go more. It's, it's those wires that are in there bouncing. So, um, I just want to make sure it's understood how the shoe works before we do the next part of the experiment. Um, I have here an electro stimulator. It is not a taser. <laughs> <laughs> But doctors use this, and I, they've used it on me. I had a uh, muscle in my um, calf that wasn't firing. A little muscle goes down in there. And so they put a long needle down into my calf, and they started shooting electricity. <laughs> you know, your leg's going like that. And, you know, and it wasn't quite, it won't be that bad, really. <laughs> but um, what he did is he jump-started my muscle by a click. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm going to click and do you see a spark? No, you can't see anything. But what it's doing, it's putting some low voltage out. Can't even see it. Okay? So, question for all of us science students here. Is air a good conductor of electricity, yes or no? It's, it's, uh, is it as good as water? No, 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 no. no. So, I, you know, come on. Okay? Air is uh, not that good of a... Okay? So... Um, Let's see, if you don't mind holding the shoe. Um, I'm not going to touch the shoe. But you didn't see fire go between there, did you? You know what? When you enter somebody else's presence, there's not fire going either. <laughs> but what I want you to understand, you just watch what we're talking about here. You have the Holy Ghost advantage. So, woo, I'm about 10, 12 inches, 12, 10 inches away. No. All right. Now, would you like to touch the shoe? Are you comfortable with me giving you a shock? Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> Are you ready to catch him? <laughs> Guess what? I'm too far away for this thing to light that up. How did it light up? 
it went through him, right? Right? Nice, okay. All right. Come on up. <laughs> you ever heard of the electric fence thing? Yes. <laughs> um, who's the one who gets the worst shock? Uh, the person, person, no, it's the person that's on the end. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Don't look at me. I look okay. No, you look at the shoe. Okay. Did it light up? No, no. no? Okay, hold on. Maybe. Oh, well, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right, come on up. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Go look at the shoe. I don't know. This is quite a far away. Nothing's happening. Oh, come on. Let's get her. We should be able to get it here. Nope, it's not happening. No, nope. but what I want to show you and tell you is this. This is, the, this is the reason why anytime you're with people and they start talking, you need to say, do you mind if we pray? Yeah. 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 Do you mind if we pray? Okay. Now you take this. All right. You go down there. All right. You shock him. And I'm going to get in here. See if we can. You got to get. Whoops. whoops you're going to shock yourself. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Not doing it. Okay. Man. I normally can get about four or five people across there to get a go. I'm just too dense. You're not too dense. No, no, no. It's not too dense. You, you guys may be seated. You two stay here. But what? Let's give my hand. Okay. Um, so we had a lady in our church that um, she was an elderly lady who had uh, passed, and the um, her home was like about three hours north in Minnesota, all the way up, way up in northern Minnesota. And the family was wanting to know what they could do for a funeral, so I looked and found out where her town was, and there was a church that was, wasn't too far away, so I called the pastor and said, uh, we, I got a lady in the church who passed, and her family all lives up in your area. Would you be so kind as to let us use your facility? We'll do whatever we have to pay. We'll pay whatever we have to. We'd just like to use your facility. He said, no, nah, you're not going to pay anything. He said, besides that, he said, I'll get all our ladies, and we'll do all the meal and we'll do everything for you. So we'll take care of it all for you. So we took all of our people and we drove three hours north because that's where all of our family was and there was uh, maybe maybe a dozen of uh, us apostolics who made that three-hour trip and there was maybe a dozen if even that in the church that was there and the whole rest of the sanctuary is completely filled for that funeral I'm conducting the funeral and I'm getting towards the end and the Lord speaks to me and says what I want you to do is I want you to have everybody to make a chain throughout this sanctuary, and I want you to pray. And I'm like, it's a funeral, God. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what that means? There's a casket right there. And we're going to go. And he says, yeah, I want, to, I, want to, I want to even from across the aisle, I want everybody in this place to join hands. And I'm like, well, I don't know what, I, I'm leaving town, so I guess it doesn't matter. I live three hours away. Okay. So I said to him, I said, I want us all to stand, and I want us to, to hold hands at the conclusion of the service. And, you know, I want, I want you to come across. I want you to hold everybody. I want everybody to hold, hold hands. I only did it because Jesus told me to do it, because if, 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 and I was arguing. <laughs> but all that could be said after the funeral was a whole church full of non-apostolics was, did you feel the electricity go through? Yeah. Wow. Wow. There's people in that church today simply because we held hands and prayed. My wife and I were in Atlanta airport and getting on uh, the shuttle, which is packed with people. And this guy gets on. And it was just something that drew my wife and I. Just, you know, just, it, there's something that when you make yourself aware, God lights those things up and we started talking to him and we had our grandbaby there and he was looking at his grandbaby he's talking about oh, we got a little kid and 
we just said, well, where are you going? What are you doing? He says, well, I'm going to South America for a missions trip. I said, you are. We're on our way to Central America for a missions trip. And I said, do you, do you mind if we pray? I guess you instantly. You, that's, that's not a coincidence. We were drawn. There's that draw. You have to let the Spirit draw you because God's drawn somebody. I'll never know till eternity. He said, absolutely. We held hands and the whole car got silent. Because everybody in that car felt it. I wasn't thinking about that, but it, it hit you after. Did you realize that the whole car went silent? Everything was silent. And we prayed with him, and we, we weren't shouting on top of our lungs. We were praying silently, but that in reverence to what was felt in that car, that entire jam subway car went silent. When we got done, he was like, wow, wow. And then he looked up and he realized he, we had prayed through a stop and we had missed a stop and he had to take and go on and turn around back. I'll never know. I'll never know. But all I had to do was try to be sensitive. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Okay, we need to hasten because my time is going to be up here in a bit. Um, so now, you touch the shoe. Now I would like for your wife, and I don't want to touch you, to turn towards him. Okay? I want you to turn, uh, there you go, facing her. Lift it up a little bit. There we go. And give me your hand back this side. My thing must be going. Uh, um, because... Um, Ooh, I got the shock right off your watch. <laughs> so I know it's working. Hmm. Well, it worked over there. Yep. Well, let's let's try it. Give me a little bit of arm, maybe. There we go. There we go. Okay. How did, can you imagine, no batteries, just electricity coming out of his body that you can't see, enough to light up lights in a tennis shoe. Wow. If that can happen, mm. Brother Scott, you got the goods. And you enter into anybody's sphere. sphere, anybody's magnetic field, all one trillion cells of their bodies being affected by you entering into that. And always remember that the greater, the, the lesser always turns to the greater. Yes. Wherever you go, you have the advantage. All the time you have the advantage. And I promise you, the more that you are in tune with the Spirit and you keep yourself prayed up and the power and the energy, just like I said, you walk out, you know what I'm talking about, you walk out of red hot church service, did anybody experience what I'm talking about? You walk into a restaurant, you know what I'm talking about? It happens to us apostolics all the time. We never clicked with it. But what's happening is, and it's happened to me many times, we'll walk in. It's not because we're dressed any different. because they were having us turning before they even knew what we were wearing. They had no idea. There was something inside of them that because something greater entered into that room than what they had. Something happened and they pivot and they turn and they begin to look. What is this? They don't even consciously understand it and know. Just like you don't oftentimes consciously understand. But I don't know about you, but there's times when all of a sudden I can feel something very evil and I don't even see anything around me. What is that? That is my spirit is feeling yeah. something pushing back against my spirit. There's something that's not there. That, that it's just not right. Yeah. I was in the altar and I was praying and what took place was that we had a, a, a young lady who, um, who had come in. She was uh, the, the girl of the gang. And one of the people in our church witnessed to her again. Who thinks the girl of the gang is going to come to church? But she's probably one of the most hurting people in the whole community. Right. 
She's undoubtedly just like the woman that Jesus, that the Pharisees dragged in in the middle of Jesus' teaching. The whole reason why she's that is because she probably didn't have a good dad image. And she's got childhood wounds and she's got all this stuff piling up. And we've judged them. And where the reality is, they're the one who's probably looking the hardest. Someone had invited her to church and she came and she got, almost instantaneously got the Holy Ghost. And on that Sunday, the whole gang came. And I, honestly, I was nervous. But I did my best to teach our people, it don't matter who shows up here, we're having church. Amen. Why? Because I'm telling you, you've got to have it. You can't have a dead service. You can't have a dead service. You've got to have an alive service. Because there's someone who's coming who's looking for something who's looking for something, and I've watched it happen yeah. time and time. Yeah. We won't even get to a song service, and there's times my wife can tell her testimony. She walked in the back door of a United Pentecostal church, and she instantly began to weep because what she felt when she walked through that door was the love she was looking for, and she hadn't even talked to anybody yet. I'm telling you, it's there. It emanates. Yeah. I'll go back and I'll tell you the story from the Azusa Street. I got a chance to read the papers. They called it the fall line depending upon how fervent their prayer was, is how far out from the doors of the church that people would fall prostrate, walking by and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost without anybody even saying a thing to them. That blows my mind, but that's what happened at Azusa Street, and it's written and it's documented. What I'm talking about is when you have a red-hot service, there will be people who will walk in, and we've had it at our church. I don't know what it was, but I was walking by, and something grabbed a hold of me and pulled me into that church. I'm here to tell you, we got what the world is looking for. Now more than ever. Now more than ever. And so what happened is, is that I just decided to stand. She was in the altar. She came to the altar during the song service. Her mascara is running, and it's, her face is, is just a mess, and she's up there, and she's dancing a beautiful Holy Ghost dance that can only be done in the Spirit. And I just felt as a pastor just to step down and just stand there and protect. I don't know, it's just one of those things. But then all of a sudden, I felt evil behind me. What was that? That was a, someone else's magnet, totally opposed to mine. So you're going to feel it both ways. Because he said he, you're going to bind and loose. Yeah. He said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. And I turned around, and there was a gang member mocking. And he came right down to the front in the center of the church, and I happened to be standing right here. He was right behind me in front of the whole congregation, mocking her. And I just turned and said, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Boom. He hit the ground face first. I never sat there and thought, do I need to call for the elders? What do I do? It just becomes an automatic thing. It gets to the place that you're like, yeah, that's it. That's the same thing I felt before. You get there by practice. As you feel that, you start to step out by faith. You know what? I feel like God's drawing me. There's something happening here. You step out. If you make a mistake, you're better than the guy who didn't try. You're going to learn. He's going to show you. That guy was out absolutely cold. I got down there. I couldn't even, he wasn't breathing nothing. He was gone. And I laid hands on him. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, raise this man up. He got up off the floor speaking in tongues. I, I don't understand that stuff. But I'm saying, listen, if you understood... If you understood where I came from, oh yes, I was raised in Pentecost, I get that. But I was so bashful, so shy, I would have never in my wildest imagination ever, 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 ever see, see myself do that. I didn't, it wasn't even in a church that even really taught that much about mm, demons and angels. But God's calling you. Because the Northeast needs people who believe 
in what God believes in them, yes. not what the devil believes. And he's doing everything he can to keep you distracted and to keep you not believing and understanding who you are so you keep your mouth silent. He's going to keep on trying to get you to second guess every time God's Paul pulling and directing so that you bypass opportunity and bypass opportunity. And he is depending upon us. He is not going to come and send angels down to do what he has commissioned you and us to do. He's already doing his job. He's drawing, and he needs you, and he needs me to be one who will say, count on me, God. Count on me. Somehow, within the next 12 months, God, I pray I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I pray that you will make a decision and make a commitment and say, Lord, I will open up my eyes to see, my ears to hear. I'm going to keep myself in tune to the Spirit. Use me. If you can use anything, God, use me. Let us stand. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I feel it. Hallelujah. Do you feel it in the house? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, it's here. He's coming with power. He's coming with power. Hallelujah. He's going to fill you and imbue you. Hallelujah. So it saturates. So it flows out of you. Hallelujah. He's in the house. Will you receive from him what he's trying to give you right now? Will you believe? Will you accept it? Will you trust him? Will you give yourself to what he's doing? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. While we're still praying, I'm going to ask you. If you're going to willing to make a commitment and say, God, count me in, I pray that there'll be 100 people next year, one year from now, filled with the Holy Ghost because we met here today in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm asking you, if you will come, if you'll take a step forward, if you're willing to make that commitment, this is serious. Uh, but this is a commitment that you're making before God. But he's here. I, I've done my best to try to tell you that God has given you the advantage. Uh, he wants to use you. Would you step? Uh, would you come forward? Uh, would you make that commitment? Uh, would you say, God, I'm opening up my heart. Uh, use me, Lord Jesus. Uh, use me, Lord. Use Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Use me, Jesus. God, oh God, oh God, oh God, in your name, God. Lord God, because you're calling the church. You're calling everybody. The time demands it. The time demands it, God. The time demands it. We, oh God, have got to see the saints. We heard it last night. This was the message that was given last night by Brother Reaver. We've got to get out of the ark. We've got to get out of the ark. But we've got to believe. 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 In the name of Jesus. 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 Count me, God. Count me, God. Thank 
Come on, let's just continue in this flow just for a few more moments here. The Lord is doing something very special in each and every word's life right now. Come on, you've got the Holy Ghost advantage. You've got the Holy Ghost advantage. You walk into the atmosphere. You've got the advantage. Come on, walk in that faith right now. Walk in that faith right now. Know that you, you and the Holy Ghost are the majority in the room. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus name. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're not already, I think it'd be appropriate if we just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost for about 30 seconds or so. Come on, pray in that heavenly language right now. Come on, something's being activated right now. Something's being activated right now. You're connecting directly to heaven right now. Now, what you just received in the last few moments and in this session, I want you to grab a hold of somebody right now. Just join together in unity and allow this Holy Ghost advantage to be joined together in numbers. As we go to our cities, as we go to our towns, our churches, into tomorrow's service, we're going to feel this advantage activated. As you go on throughout your day today, if you go out to eat, you go home in your neighborhood, you're going to feel this advantage activated. You're going to walk in newness. You're going to walk with more authority. You're going to walk with confidence. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus name Jesus name oh in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm so thankful for the Holy Ghost in my life but I think today there was just something kind of just that clicked in my spirit when I walk into the atmosphere, people notice. When I walk into my job on Monday, people are going to notice. And it's going to bring an awareness to us. It's going to bring an alertness to us. And we can walk with confidence and boldness knowing that there's a natural attraction that is in us because of the Holy Ghost. And I'm so thankful. So thankful. We've got an advantage every time we walk in a room. We've got one up every time we walk in a room. And you and Jesus are the majority in any situation. Amen. Why don't we just give the Lord thanks right now for new revelation, reiteration, being reminded of this today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what's in us. 
and what we're walking away with today and what we're walking into. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Brother Thompson. Practical teaching that you can apply immediately. You don't have to go take a 12-step course how to, how to apply this. You just need to walk into the atmosphere with authority, knowing that you've got an advantage no matter where you're at. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One more time. Can you join me? Let's just clap our hands all across. Somebody just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a great session this morning. Brother Sistrunk and now Brother Thompson. And we're going to transition here into our, our next part of the day. But it just feels so good right now. Amen. I know they had a great session over there, but we've got something special that happened in here this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's take just a few minute break here. We'll try to get back in here about 1235, about a nine minute break. 1235, we'll get started with some worship and into our general session with Brother Sistro. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. We're going to have a good time as we continue in Jesus' name.